Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a quilt and it's called Tropics. Now this is a great pattern if you have that one special fabric that you really want to highlight because we're going to use that in the middle of each of these blocks. This is my special fabric. I've been waiting to find a pattern that will show all these nice flowers off very nicely. And so that's what's gonna go in here. Then for these other patchwork parts, we're going to use jelly roll strips. So I've picked this one because the greens and the purples look really nice with the colors in here. The only other thing we're gonna need is a background and I'm gonna use a nice solid white. This is a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern. And I love their patterns because they all come with multiple sizes. Now I'm going to make the throw size today. So I'm going to need 19 of my two and a half inch strips, seven eighths of a yard of the focus fabric, a yard and a quarter of the background, and then some border yardages, which we will add after we get all the patchwork done. The first thing I'm going to do is pick out the 19 strips that I'm going to use. Now I like all of them. They're all very pretty but these really light ones here, these ones just don't have enough contrast. So if I put them against the background, they won't, they won't show up. So we'll put those aside for sure. Then of what's left, I'm probably gonna use most of them and I might only use a few of the stripes. I love all those dots. So I'm just gonna keep picking these out and taking a few out here and there until I've got the 19 left. Here are the 19 strips that I'm going to use. And the next step is to cut the focus fabric and cut the background fabrics. Now, this is not my pattern, so I can't give you all the exact sizes, but Cozy Quilt Designs patterns are always very easy to follow. All of the cutting is done now. The next step is to take some of our two and a half inch strips over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch them up in pairs. I went ahead and paired up the strips and I didn't worry too much about which are in a pair. I just picked two different ones and tried to get two different colors. And all we have to do is open these up, put them right sides together and stitch down one edge using a careful quarter inch seam. And try not to stretch either of the strips. Just put them together carefully. Stitch all the way down. Once that's all stitched, I'm going to finger press the seam allowances to one side. So all I'm doing is opening this up, pulling it open and holding it, and then drawing my finger down that seam. So you can kind of hold with this to keep it stable, pull it open here. And you'll find if you do this all the way down the strip, it is so easy to iron afterward. Once those are all stitched up, we do want to give them a quick pressing. Even though we finger press them, the iron is always best. So I'm just going to flatten it out there. And I like to do a dry first and then some steam. Now we're going to take these ironed double strip sets and the focus fabric back over to the machine. Open up one of these strips and then we're going to take the double here and they're the same size so we're going to put them right sides together and I think I'm going to put the double strip on the bottom because I have those pinked edges and they will stick outside a little bit so it's a little bit easier for me to get my nice quarter inch if this one that I cut myself is on the top so I'm going to stitch a quarter inch from that cut edge all 
the way down one side and then all the way back up the other. We're going to take these right to the cutting board and we are going to use the strip tube ruler on this. So this is a ruler with a 90 degree angle that has a lot of different lines on it and we're going to use the five and a half inch line and we're going to put that line on the stitching. So here's the five and a half inch line. And we're going to slide this down till it's on the stitching line, not on the cut edge, on the stitching line. I'm going to move it over a little bit so I can get a better triangle. I'm not going to have so much waste there and I'm going to cut on both sides here. So what we've got after we cut that is a square that's got the two strips here and the focus fabric there. Now we're going to spin this around and we're going to put that five and a half inch line on this stitching line here. Now we're going to still have to make a fresh cut here because if I slide it all the way over, I will lose the tip of the fabric there. So you're going to have to slide it most of the time and make fresh cuts. So I'm going to cut this here and then I'm, I can't cut left handed. So I'm going to turn the whole thing around. and cut from this side. So you can find what works best for you if you're right or left handed and depending on which way you like to cut. Now we have another square here. Again, it's got the two strips. It's got the focus fabric, but those strips are in opposite positions here. So I'm going to keep cutting keep moving the triangle all the way down this strip unit and I'll be able to get eight of these blocks. Now we want to iron all of these. So whichever direction this seam allowance is already ironed, that's the direction we want to iron that seam. So I'm just going to peel it open and press it flat with my hands a little. I'm trying to make sure that I don't get this curve. I want a nice straight seam there. Then give it a little steam and then see these little things hanging off the edge? Those are called dog ears and they will make too much bulk in the corners if we leave them. So we're going to trim these off and I'm going to go ahead and iron up the whole stack here. Our next step is to take the rest of the strips and these background strips over to the machine. Now these guys are just going to get sewn as singles. So we have one background and one strip. And let's put the colored strip down with the one we cut on top. And again, we're going to stitch down one side and back up the other side. These are also going to get trimmed with our strip tube ruler. Obviously, we're going to use a different measurement. Let's do this one because you can see the stitching line here a little bit better. Now, I'm going to use the three inch line here, and it's almost easier to start on this far end. Here's that three inch line. I'm going to slide it down so it's right on the stitching line. And then I'm going to trim this. And you'll notice you may have a few stitches on the top there, and that's okay. They will come right out when you pull this open, and we've got a half square triangle. Now I'm going to turn this around here, cut it again, and again, we may have a few stitches left there, that's okay. Once all of these triangles are cut, we also want to iron these open. So put the light fabric, the background fabric down, peel that open. And this way the seam allowance is going to go towards the dark and 
and cut off any dog ears. And remember, if you've got a couple of those stitches showing, like I've got here, they you don't have to pick them out at all. You just open it up, they'll come right apart. We have everything we need now to make our blocks. We're gonna need four of these background squares, and we're gonna need four of these guys. Let's just get four different ones. It doesn't really matter which ones we get. Let's just get a variety. And then we're going to need two of these guys. Let's get that one and that one and head over to the machine. First step is to take two of these guys and two background squares and we're going to sew this into one unit. So I like to keep them together like that, put them right sides together, and we're gonna sew down here and then down here. So I'm just going to line it up, slide it over, and leave it on the machine, and then slide this one over, line it up, and this helps them stay together and helps you not get anything turned upside down. Now we're gonna to wanna to finger press the seam allowances. Now it wants to go away from this seam here because we've got an intersection there. So that's the way we're going to press it. So I'm just pulling it open a little bit, pressing down there. Now this one wants to go the opposite way, again, because we've got a seam coming in there. So we'll just do that. Now we can sew this last seam here. So those the intersection in the middle, the seam allowances, are, they're going to be nested. They're going in opposite directions. I'm going to line up the tips here. Oop. Keep that flat. And now we can just press this seam to one side. It doesn't matter which side you press it to. And I'm not going to stretch it as I'm pressing it. I'm just going to slide my finger along there. So now I need to make another unit exactly like that. Line up these two blocks so that these four background squares make a diagonal line. Then the last two blocks here, we're going to put the focus fabric on the outside of the block. Next, Put these right sides together, these right sides together, slide this one over, and leave it on the machine, and then take this one and slide it over. You just have to be careful you don't turn anything, but you want them facing the same way that you laid them out. Stitch down here. And now we're just gonna go opposite directions with our seam allowances. So let's put this one to the left there because it's towards all the darker fabrics away from this light here. And then on the top half, we'll do the same thing again, away from the light toward the dark. And we can sew this last seam those will nest as soon as we match them up there. And there's the first block. Now there's a special way I like to iron these blocks. I like to put it in half. This is the way it was when I sewed that last seam. And I'm gonna kind of press the seam allowances with my hands so they stay going the way I want. And then I'm gonna start with a dry iron and just smash it a little bit with some heat. Flip it over, do the same thing. See how that guy wants to go over there? I'm gonna put it back the way I want it. 
And this, the reason I'm being careful here is because a lot of these fabrics, all of these fabrics, the grain is going on the diagonal here. So it's, it's a bias grain. So it's easy to distort these when you're ironing if you're not careful. So I usually iron it closed, get it pretty flat, steam it a little bit, and then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to first just smash that seam allowance to one side. It doesn't matter which way you go. And then I'm going to use my iron and I'm going to smooth the fabric along the diagonal so I can pull it this way to get it flat. And I can pull it this way to get it flat. But if you start stretching it this way and this way, it won't get flatter. It will become distorted and stretched and it won't lay flat. So be sure to smooth your fabrics along both diagonals. It feels funny at first, but it will keep your squares very flat when they're done. I've got all the blocks for the quilt done. And if you look at the pattern of the finished quilt, there's definitely two blocks in there, but we only made one block. Now check this out. What happens when you start laying these out is they are going to combine. So we're gonna twist them and turn them. And as we get more and more blocks here, now we can start to see there's a star block right there. And there's that block right there. So it's so cool that you can get what looks like two different blocks by just taking this one block and twisting and turning it. All of the blocks are laid out and I just laid them anywhere. I didn't even look at what colors ended up where. So now I might trade around a little bit. Maybe I don't want both stripes there. So I can either turn a block around or I might trade some blocks just to make sure my colors look balanced they already look pretty balanced. So the only thing I'm gonna do is break up some of the ginghams or break up some of the stripes. Then I'm going to sew it into rows, sew the rows together, get some borders on it, and it, we can get it on the quilting machine. The quilt has the borders on it. It's all loaded up. Now we need to pick a thread color. The only choices really are some sort of lavender or purple, green or white. I don't think I want to use white because I want the pattern to show in those white areas. So this green, it's a slightly brighter than the quilt, but it looks pretty good on there. And then there's a lot of la lavender shades in the patchwork, so I think any of these will work. This one's a little bit darker. And this one's a very nice, soft, light one. Hmm, I think I'm going to go with this medium shade. For the quilting, I'm going to use a pattern called Anne's Garden, and it has these nice morning glories, and it also has some little hummingbirds. So that should look really good on this flowery quilt. Now that the Tropics quilt is all done, you can really see the two different blocks that show up in the whole quilt. You can hardly see the one block that we used to make it, 
So this right here, that's the only block. And I just love how when you twist and turn, you get the star blocks and you get the focus fabric blocks. I'm really glad that I decided to use the jelly roll that really only had purple and green. I was a little worried that maybe it should be more multicolored to go with the focus fabric. But this, for some reason, seems to frame each of these blocks very nicely. Also, the plain borders, they're not real printy, they're just a little dot and a little marble on here, frames it very nicely. And here's that quilting. We've got these nice flowers. We've got some hummingbirds. We've even got some little butterflies in there, which I didn't even know. I didn't even know the butterflies were in the quilting pattern. I used an all over green ferny print on the back. That looks very good with it. Just a really fun, fun pattern to make. Thanks so much for watching our tutorial on how to make the tropics quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we're gonna have another giveaway. This has been one of our most popular videos. It's called Jagged X's. And I have a lot of viewers who've made this pattern and then sent me pictures of it in different colors. So this one is all done red, black, a little bit of a light gray. We've got this really cool geometric print on the back side. So you can win this quilt today by entering your email address and your name in the link right below the video that says giveaway. And remember, we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world, so good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting!